This build is going to be a rustic copper and barn wood table. The materials were selected by my son. Hi. And the, in it, the finished product will be auctioned off at a softball fundraising event later this week. I let him select the wood, and he picked out that large initial flat board. It used to be part of a mining trommel, and I figured that set the tone, and it set the tone for a more rustic kind of barn lumber sort of table. So there you saw uh, me trim that board off, and then you saw us trim up the the mining wood, the barn wood. That... What are you doing? Oh, was it? Here we're preparing the surface top. You, well, why don't you tell them what we're doing? What are we doing? Uh, we're doing a table. Good. Once we had the top cleaned up a little bit, I went ahead and cut that barn lumber to size to make the skirts of the table. And I was trying to figure out how I was going to put them together. And eventually I decided that since the copper was going to be trim accent pieces, I could do this real fast and simply screw it from the outside since it'll all be covered by those copper sheets. And obviously I had my helper there putting the miters together. What are miters, buddy? Uh, copper. Oh, okay. I'm using pocket screws to attach the skirt to the underside of the table. It works really well. It's incredibly fast. You can't see them. They're not super elegant uh, compared to a lot of other solutions, but then this table is designed not to be elegant. It's a don't overthink it kind of table. And since the board was cupped, using a bunch of pocket screws like this will help me hold it flat. Here I am assembling the rectangle of the table skirting. And again, I'm just screwing and gluing because these screws will be hidden underneath the copper. If you didn't like doing that, you could still screw and glue and, I don't know, plug the screw heads with a dowel or something. Once assembled, it was time to go ahead and attach it to the table itself. And as you can see, I had help. What'd you do, buddy? Uh, I helped put it in the screws. You did. You did a great job. I had my helper putting in some screws there. Finished sanding was trying to find a balance between keeping those circular saw marks on the board and its rustic appearance and making sure it doesn't snag your clothes. This is the material stock for the legs. It is a, uh, could be 70, 80 year old straight grain fur 2x4, completely weathered gray. And I just roughed out some leg blanks and then I cut them in half. I cut the legs a little extra long thinking I'd have to trim them for bad spots later. It turned out I didn't and I sort of forgot that I cut them extra long. It became a problem. You actually cut it too long. You forgot to trim it for bad spots later. I sure did, bud. And it came a big problem. It did. So here I'm cutting the recesses off the legs so they'll nest into the corners of the table skirt. And I'm only taking them down 3 8 just to, to give them some nice overlap and a, a little more finished look. It's a very simple process with that stacked dado cutter. It's also the closest we came to a shop accident in a very long time because I had a little guy and he was not really thinking about his shop safety rules at that moment in time. And you'll notice here in a bit, he's going to try to poke that dado head. Because it's so heavy, it spins down real slow. So it was still moving. And we had to have a little talk about kickback and about how you got to listen to the rules and we agreed that we'd do better. So here we are mounting those legs in the corners and that's why I cut those recesses. You can also easily see from this shot that I didn't 
cut the things down, and I don't know why I didn't notice, but yeah, whatever. Um, they ended up being 18 inches long, and the original plan, in order to keep it in proportion, should have had them at 16, which would have been a low table, but it would have been, as I said, proportional rather than this tall. Yeah, it was a mistake. Anyways, so I just pocket screwed the end of them just to hold them in place, and then I'm going to drill and screw through the sides of the skirt because, once again, all of this is going to get covered by some copper trim, and it didn't matter. Otherwise, attaching table legs like, securely is its problematic. It can be difficult to do so in a, a stylish way. Once they're attached, flip it over, check for wobbles, and then I just took a, a nip off of two legs, and that straightened it out. Hey, what are we doing here, buddy? We're making a table! Yeah, but what are you doing? Creating the edges? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we're, we're painting it with what is a mixture of water-based poly and white Elmer's glue. So it's about 50-50. I'm only doing that just to get rid of it because that's that Mod Podge stuff I'd mixed up for another project. But the white Elmer's glue mixed with that water poly does give me a nice hard finish. It soaks into the wood fibers and uh, seems to strengthen them to some extent. I don't know how durable it is as a finish. It's it proven to be quite durable and everything else. I've never seen anybody paint with a white glue water poly before, but it worked for me. Now, with that done and dried, the next day I'm going to cut out the strips of copper. This is a big sheet of green copper that I, gosh, I is, is on a mining claim. Uh, I think it was our sapphire mining claim, and I'm not exactly sure what it was. It's not beat up enough to be the bottom of a sluice box, and yet it was tinned on one side. I don't know. It's usable. The board itself is about three quarters of an inch thick, and I cut the copper strips just a little over an inch wide, which means they overhang slightly. And then I'm attaching them with a whole can of salvaged upholstery, you know, big head brad nails. And obviously I got, I got helper here doing the, uh, the pounding with me. Once I get that strip all the way across, I'll then wrap the copper around the edges. There I'm putting in just some some bright nails to pin it in place. Once we had all the nails in, I went around the edges and rolled the copper so that it wrapped around on both sides, giving it a nice hand hammered finish. Here I am cutting the copper trim pieces that will wrap around on the skirting and hide the nail holes.
I made some marks on my work surface and pre-bent them. Well, I pre-bent that one backwards, but then I pre-bent them all. And they're attached at the corners with just some little nails. Those are also cut slightly high, and then I round them over so that they match the rest of the table. It's at this point that I should have noticed that the legs were two inches too high. Anyways, they love you. It's too late at that point. You'd have probably broken all sorts of stuff trying to knock them loose. So all I would have had to do was cut them shorter. Yeah. It's one of those things that probably only bothers the builder and no one else would notice if you kept your mouth shut. The last bit is a bit of polish and cleanup. I did not want bright copper. I wanted to maintain that green tint, but I also didn't want the level of dirt and corrosion that was on it. So I compromised by using a pad with a little bit of uh, degreaser on it. And it seemed to work really nice leaving me the corrosion, but getting rid of the chicken crap or whatever it was. And the final result. You know, I, I'm not a rustic furniture guy, though I know it's quite popular right now, and I understand why craftsmen make them, because there's a lot less time involved. And if people love it, you know, fulfill that need. I do like the way the copper sets off the wood, I like the age of that massive slab there, and I like the fact that I was able to preserve the surface of that barn wood. All in all, it's a good table. You give me a big thumbs good up. table for a small apartment. Big thumbs up. Thanks for watching. Good job.